Welcome back to Let's Play Metroid 2 Return of Samus for the Super Game Boy. Last time we started Phase 4 and today we're going to grab the upgrades within, starting with the Spacer Beam. Uh, this game introduces two new beam upgrades, one of which is pretty damn useful and the other uh, not so much, at least to me anyway. So uh, we're going to get the latter first and... Hopefully get the plasma beam before too long because uh, what's convenient is that even though I don't really like the spacer beam, the plasma beam isn't too far off. So I have plenty of time to show off what it looks like and then switch immediately to the plasma beam thereafter. So uh, why don't I like the spacer beam? What about it makes it a pretty crappy weapon? Um, its rate of fire is pathetically slow. Um, even though it's meant to have a wide radius, with it having, like, the strength of three normal beams, uh, I feel like the arc that the wave beam has is even better than the spacer, and it just feels really weak in comparison. I'm pretty sure it is the strength of three normal beams, because I feel like it takes an eternity to finish off an enemy with this thing, and... It's like, it feels even worse than the normal beam, if I'm gonna be real here, because... The rate of fire is much slower than the default weapon, so you're just kind of spending an eternity like hoping these shots land, and it's just not a very good weapon in my opinion. The plasma beam, while the radius is even worse, it happens to be the most powerful weapon in the game, beam-wise, in the sense that just about any enemy you hit it with, it kills them instantaneously, more or less. So. Yeah, Plasma Beam is 10 times better in my book, and it's my favorite beam to use in this uh, galactic adventure. So uh, one exploit I didn't really bother to mention in the previous parts, I had mentioned there are definitely some speedrun exploits. Did I just lose control of my character? What the heck? Let me fix that real quick. Okay, that was a little bit weird. <laughs> My controller, like, fucked up for a moment there. But, uh, anywho, as I was saying, um, for whatever reason, um, uh, whenever you get hit by a projectile or an, en or an enemy, Samus regains her jump. So, like, you can use this to get through vertical shafts that you would normally use the space jump for, you know? So, like, for example, I'm in a room filled with, uh, Currents, like that one, for example, I could get hit by the thing intentionally, and then, like, during my, um, damage, uh, frames, I can jump immediately out of that and be able to skip huge portions of that hallway. It's pretty cool, honestly. Um, again, there's probably other speedrun exploits I'm not thinking of. There was this one exploit I remember seeing where... They would uh, be in Morph Ball, but like they would have these frames where uh, they would be able to immediately act out of it and shoot a missile upwards, which is what they'd use to immediately wipe out the Metroids they'd be fighting. And uh, I'm not sure how to pull that off, so uh, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, feel free to let me know. I've simply just seen footage of it, I don't really know how to execute it all that well. <laughs> That being said, though, uh, even though I've never speedrun this game in my life, I would probably do it over a game like Super Metroid because uh, the tech skill margin here is far more lenient than, you know, its later sequels. And I don't know. I like to get by it at, at least memorization alone. That's probably why I would prefer to play, like, say, a Mega Man game over like Metroid for example because even go though like some of the games do have indeed glitches they're far easier to pull off and and the case of most games where you don't have like a platform item that breaks the game in two um, as long as you really know the layout and are proficient in spacing whatever weapon you have on board I feel like that's all you really need for those kind of games and I don't really have what you could call the patience to really nail down 
the tech skill needed to like perfect these kind of games. I mean, maybe I might consider Metroid 2 one day. But that's like a... That, that, that's just like... Something that's way up there in the air. Something I'm not even considering. But like, if it whatever, if it for whatever he, reason happens by accident, then uh, maybe one day, maybe one day, it'd be cool too because nobody plays Metroid 2, and I'd be like the oddball that knows the game inside out. I guess. Well, I don't know the game that well, but like, eh. I think I need to stop gloating while I'm ahead. <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, we got the plasma beam. Uh, the plasma beam, as I had said earlier, has a much thinner radius. But I swear, I swear to Christ, every enemy I hit with this thing, it, it instantaneously kills them. Does not give them any benefit of a doubt, man. And if you can get proficient at spacing this tool, man, this is like, in my opinion, the best way to plow through Metroid 2 in my book. I like how this uh, whole turret here exists to like, kind of test the space jump, but if you jump a specific way, you can kind of keep your momentum in such a fashion to where I can keep myself vertical without like, having to like, adjust my jump. Uh, trajectory every five seconds or so. And of course, uh, it being an upgrade area, there's also going to be a few Metroids here too. So even if you get the feeling that maybe you can skip out on these upgrades to like uh, opt for the Metroid route entirely, there's still quite a few Metroids within like the normal route with the upgrades and what have you. So, uh, upgrades aren't something you can entirely skip out on. It almost feels best that you, like, get the upgrades on the way to these Metroids now that I think about it. I don't think you'd lose too much time, would you? How did I think about it? Like, what would be, like, the most preferred beam to have in a speed run, though? Would it be the ice beam or the, uh, the plasma beam? Because I'm pretty sure you can use the ice beam for, like, very snarky exploits that don't really come to mind at the moment. And with that, I think we're done with this portion here, so we're gonna head on back. We got the upgrades we needed within, uh, got to show off how shitty the spacer beam was for a good five minutes or so. And, uh, I am not paying attention. That being said, though, despite all the praise I'm giving this game... And, you know, just the amount of elements I really like within this particular title. Metroid 2, as I had mentioned before, isn't one of my favorite Metroid games. Um, it's actually my fourth least favorite game next to Metroid 1, Hunters, and uh, Other M. And that's not really saying a whole lot e either. Like, to be real, if I'm going to be completely honest, there aren't really any bad Metroid games to speak of. Like, even though I don't really like Metroid 1 all that much, I don't really consider it a bad game. Uh, Hunters is a bit debatable, but I, I still feel like it kind of carries the whole idea of it being a Metroid Prime Lite pretty decently. Just, it could fare to be a little bit less repetitive. <laughs> uh... Other M's honestly the only Metroid game I consider bad. And it, it's crazy too because the series only gets better. And you can't really say that about a whole lot of franchises either. Like, you, with games like, say, Mega Man, even though I consider a lot of its sequels to be better than, like, the popular ones, like Mega Man 2 and X1, not many people really can give, like, the rest of the series any benefit of the doubt, and they more or less stick with, like, the originals. 
because to them it's like the series didn't really progress much past the like the initial appeal point i suppose and with metroid man it just gets better from here some people even consider Prime 3 the best in the series, and that game wasn't released until 2007. And it's just crazy how Nintendo was able to keep up such a consistent franchise for so long, you know? Not many, like, franchises are capable of accomplishing that. And, you know, to... Nintendo, props to you guys. You guys made not only my favorite video game franchise ever, but just a really consistent series at that. And that is saying a hell of a lot. I didn't even really play Metroid 2 until I was 12 either. I had already played uh, Zero Mission, Fusion, and Super Metroid beforehand. And like... Uh... I think what happened was that I think I found this at a flea market for like eight bucks. <laughs> you can bet your ass this game runs for a lot more than that these days. But uh, yeah, there was a time when you know retro games and collectible games these days are con were considered a lot cheaper than they are now. Like I know Super Metroid, for example, when I bought that game, I only got it for like what eight bucks. And nowadays, the, now these days, you see it going for like 45 bucks, and like retro regame retailers, and it's crazy, like just how much the prices on uh, retro games have gone up over the years, you know. Even with the existence of virtual console and shit, like what? Uh, but yeah, I ran into Metroid 2 uh, through the. Uh, through a flea market uh, I used to be kind of like a big flea market fan what happened was that like um, my cousin and his family were like huge like binge flea market goers um, they were not only into the business of selling a lot of things that would they would find and sell them at flea market vendors they would visit so many of them, and as a kid, uh, I would go with them and just buy a bunch of retro games I wouldn't be able to find elsewhere. I think this was around the time when uh, GameStop more or less took over the monopoly for uh, retro games, or not retro game stores, but video game stores as a whole, and they were starting to purge out like the retro games of other competitive game stores. And I always looked forward to these trips because at the time, like, you know, before the Wii Virtual Console, the only way to play older games was through the flea market. Like, buy, having to go out and buy these older cartridges. And, uh, having found this game, uh, I can't remember what I could really say about what I thought of it at the time. Um, I'm pretty sure I liked it. I think this was still kind of within a period where nostalgia could still kind of take over my senses. But um, I remember quite heavily getting stuck in this specific area that we're going through now. Ugh, I don't like this place at, at all. Not in the slightest bit. And it, it sucks, man, because I, I don't even really do that anymore. I mean, the best I can get as far as, like, uh retro games these days that aren't within the game stores I'm fighting them with within is conventions. Well, you know what? I, I take that bad. It's not so bad now because uh, I live in a much bigger area than I used to as a kid, so I didn't have to, like, go completely out of town to, like, find these different flea markets. And, uh, where I'm at now, there's actually, like, four different retro game stores. But, like, I'm not as compelled to buy as many games as I used to, because it's like... I don't think I've ever shown it yet, but I have quite a decent, like, game collection of both old consoles and new. And, uh, when, when you get to a point where you own so many games that you've really been wanting to play, it's harder to really convince yourself to, like, go out of your way and buy more. And sometimes I'm still guilty of buying more, but the problem with that is... Is that when you get older, and you don't have, like, the luxury of, you know, having so much free time outside of schoolwork, 
it's like you just have like this big pile of games just collecting dust within your backlog. Because I don't remember this being a problem. Because as a kid, because I visited, I only visited flea markets so often. Um, this never became a problem to me, and instead I would go back and just replay the games millions of times that I owned. Like, you know, Mega Man and Metroid, for example. That's why I know the Metroid games so well, was because I played through them numerous times as a kid. Uh, and nowadays, it's like... <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid to go to a store and then, like, get a game and then not even end up playing it. And I'm just so guilty of that on many accounts for a lot of the games I currently own. Like... If I told you just how many PS2 and PS3 games I haven't really sat down and played yet, uh, chances are you would be very surprised. Like, for example, I have owned games like Kingdom Hearts for about uh, four or five years. One and two, for that matter. And I haven't even finished those games yet. Hell, I haven't even touched Kingdom Hearts 2 yet. It's crazy, you know? It's like, the more games I own and the older I am... Finally having the money to like go out of my way and buy these games whenever I want. It's like I don't have the appeal or time for them like I used to, and it definitely blows. <laughs> I am taking way more damage than I should. So uh this here is quite arguably the hardest part of phase two because uh this place is quite literally and figuratively a maze. So you have what is a bunch of interconnecting vertical hallways leading off to a bunch of horizontal hallways filled with all the Metroids you need to find before moving on. And you want to make sure you definitely run into every hallway there is interconnecting off of these vertical branches. Otherwise, you're just going to constantly miss Metroids left and right. I know I have on some runs, and because of that, I ended up putting myself into a position where I just could find out where I was going next, because just, ugh, this is easily my least favorite part of the whole game. I do like how this place looks substantially different than the rest of the areas we've been through, though. It definitely looks like it was inhabited by Metroids, and it's very sticky very uh dark kind of dank looking ish if that makes any sense at all and it is filled to the brim with annoying gamma metroids jesus christ what's really annoying about the gamma metroids is that whenever it shoots out its bolt of lightning um you actually cannot hit it during that period so like if it shoots like a spray of lightning you cannot actually do anything about that. It'll eat up your missile, and you have more or less wasted it. It is kind of annoying to have the plasma beam out for this area, though, because uh, a lot of the enemies you see in these vertical hallways are significantly smaller than the ones we've seen elsewhere. So, uh, yeah, aiming at these particular creatures here can be pretty awkward. I am glad that I went out of my way and grabbed those two energy tanks, though, because I am getting hit far too often. Way more than any sane person should. Thankfully, the next area we're going to be heading into has an energy uh, capsule refill a magic thing jiggy. Where the hell was I going with that? In other words, I have an opportunity to fill up my energy elsewhere, and I'm not too concerned about my energy at this point in time. Not to mention, uh, the way phases 5 and 6 are structured are a bit, uh, let's just say out there. And with that, we have more or less finished phase 4. Yeah, that's usually the route I like to take going through Phase 4's uh, Metroid-ness. Because it more or less guarantees that I get every Metroid within its path in one single fell swoop. 
and it makes the trip through here a lot more comfortable. Anywho, with that being said, I'm going to finish off the part here. Next time, we're going to visit the shortest phases in the game, phases 5 and 6. So thank you guys for watching, and see you guys then.